Hey, what's going on everyone? Stephen for Hey Techie here back again. If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in HomeKit products for your smart home. HomeKit is a great smart home ecosystem, which is well known for being extremely selective in which products are given certification to work within the system. But not all HomeKit products are created equally, and there are some out there which are just downright poor. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my opinions on four of the worst HomeKit products that I've personally used, and I'm justifying why I think you should give them a miss. Before we start though, if you're interested in all things to do with an Apple smart home, whether that be HomeKit, Siri shortcuts, and everything else in between, consider subscribing to my channel. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about the Osram LEDvance LED light strip. Osram market this as a cheap entry point to HomeKit LED light strips, and whilst the price might be quite attractive, usually costing around $30, there's not much point in spending if the product you're testing doesn't work reliably. One of the main problems impacting this product is that it runs via Bluetooth, which means response time is really rather slow. Now that in itself isn't a deal breaker, but when that delay lasts for seconds almost every single time you want to use it, it really isn't a compelling argument to buy one. And of course that is when you can get it to connect to HomeKit in the first place, and this is my major grievance here. After really struggling to get this light strip connected to HomeKit, it continued to have poor connection within the app. That also meant that Siri control, which is promised on the box, was nearly non-existent in practice. Now, I originally reviewed this product in late 2020, and at that time, I couldn't control the light strip with the HomePod Mini or with my Apple Watch, which was hugely disappointing. Hugely disappointing, especially considering that Apple Watch support was touted on the box. All of that added together means that for me, this is a very hard pass. The next product on my list is the Onvis C3 Indoor Smart Camera. Now, full disclaimer, this is the only product in this video which was sent out to me free of charge to review. As in every case though, here at HeyTechie, we pledge to give you, our viewers, our honest opinion on products so you can make the best and most informed decision for you. And it's as part of that why this camera makes our avoid list. The C3 camera itself promises much and was one of the first on the market offering HomeKit secure video. Retailing for around £90 here in the UK or $120, it's not cheap, but it is priced towards a more entry level product. Entry level or not, the first bone of contention that I experienced with camera was the awful setup process. Like the Osram product before it, after scanning the QR code for HomeKit, I was still unable to add this device to my setup. In the end, after taking over an hour and a wide variety of solutions, a factory reset of the camera resolved the issue, but even once it's been set up, I found it to be quite unreliable when I've tried to drop in to see what's happening. How useful is an unreliable security camera really going to be for you? The footage that the camera shoots itself is okay in the daytime, but the night mode is really quite poor, a lot poorer than what I expected. The footage is grainy and really below par from what you'd expect from a modern product. We're currently in the process of filming our full length review of this product, so I don't want to say too much more just now, and there are some redeeming qualities, so make sure that you leave a like on this video if you want to see our full review of this camera next week. This might just be the most controversial pick of this video, but yes, I think you should avoid buying Apple's original HomePod. Apple's original smart speaker is an awesome piece of engineering and design, offering a premium quality speaker if you're prepared to shell out a premium price for it. But now in 2021, is this really a product that you should be buying? The fact that Apple has discontinued the original HomePod is a bad omen, which means while support will continue for the next couple of years, its days are numbered. Beyond the price argument, why would you buy a HomePod when you could buy several HomePod Mini instead? 
Now sure, the speaker quality of the Mini isn't quite as good as its predecessor, but it's more than good enough for most people. So unless you're lucky enough to have a home cinema or some other similar setting, a HomePod Mini is going to do everything that you need it to. On top of that, the HomePod Mini functions in almost exactly the same way, offering you the same Siri voice assistant and HomeKit hub experience that is central to the Apple smart home. Plus, the HomePod Mini supports Thread, which is fast becoming one of the major connectivity standards for the modern smart home. The HomePod doesn't support that, and so even its days as the hub of your smart home are numbered too. Sure, if you buy it, it's always going to be a phenomenal speaker, but there are far better choices for your smart home. And personally, I have a hunch that Apple are going to release an updated HomePod in the future which supports Thread. So I'd say save your money for now and get some HomePod minis instead. Finally, the last product that makes my list is the Life X Mini A60 bulb. Now, this might come as a shock to you, considering how well it performed in my previous video, in which I demonstrated just how much money you could save by switching to a smart LED bulb setup. Now, if you've not checked out this video already, you really should, it could save you a lot of money. Link is in the description below. Unlike the other HomeKit accessories in this video, I've actually no grievance with this HomeKit experience and the functionality of this bulb. In fact, I actually use this bulb every single day because it offers a good amount of light and is reliable. However, LifeX are still selling this bulb for £45, or nearly $60, which is outrageous in 2021. For the same price, you could buy two Nanoleaf Essentials bulbs, which are future-proofed with thread support, and you'll still have change for a taxi ride home. Now sure, LifeX claimed that their bulb offers 1 billion colours, as opposed to Nanoloof's 16 million, but come on, who really needs 1 billion colours? Not to mention that over the course of these bulbs' lifetimes, the Nanoleaf bulb would save you £31.50 per bulb you have in your home. So, whilst this LifeX product works pretty well in my experience, it makes this list because no one should be buying it at that price when there are so many different options available that do basically the same thing, and in some cases even have more features for a fraction of the price. So there you have it, that's my list of HomeKit products I think you should avoid. Did I miss any products out? Have you had a bad experience with any HomeKit products? If you have, let me know in the comments down below, I really want to hear from you. If you've not already done so, don't forget that our HomePod Mini giveaway will soon be ending. One lucky entrant will be winning a HomePod Mini in the colour of their choice. If you want in with a chance to win, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment using the hashtag HeyTechie1000Giveaway, letting me know what you want to see on the channel in the future. In the meantime, make sure to check out our Facebook and Instagram pages, where you'll get a lot more great content during the week that you won't see here on YouTube. Until next time then, I've been Stephen, for Hey Techie.